In this lesson, we're going to talk about manual Boolean operation, which is basically, in layman's terms, connecting one object to another object. Now first, what we wanted to do is we wanted to add like a ball object on the edge of this. And again, I also wanted to retain the quads, which is a face with four points on it. In order to do that, we're going to have to make our ball out of a box, because if we were to drop a ball into the scene and press W, I'm going to go ahead and move this ball up and over, and then I'm going to press R and scale it up. I'm just going to go ahead and scale that very large. You can see that on the end here, we have a bunch of tries. And I usually, I try to avoid tries whenever I can. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I'm going to go ahead and create a box. So I'm going to select the cube. I'm going to press W on the keyboard, drag this up, and go ahead and drag this over to the side. Now we're going to go ahead and scale it. So we'll just enlarge it. And why don't we go ahead and while we're at it, we're going to go to our channel layer box editor, select polycube. Why don't we go ahead and increase the subdivisions by three, like we did before. So I selected all those, added three. Now we can go ahead and work with this. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do some basic shaping on this to make it like a circle. So go ahead and right click and go to vertex. We're gonna try to shape this as best we can like a ball. So let's go ahead and press spacebar. Let's go to our overhead view and we'll work with the tops and bottoms first. So I'll just shift click and drag over marquee and I'm gonna press R on the keyboard to scale it. We're gonna get a round shape here. Oh, looks pretty round to me. I'm gonna go ahead and press spacebar and I'm gonna to go to the front view and possibly just drag these down and kind of make a ball shape with this box. So kind of go like this then drag these in and press spacebar again. We can maybe go to our side view, kind of zoom out here. Now our sword is kind of in the way for us to shape this. So we'll go up into this view here. We're going to select our sword, right click, select object mode, select the sword and go ahead and hit control plus H. That'll hide the sword from our view. So now go ahead and select our box again, press space bar. We're going to go to the box view. So it looks like it's a side, you know, the side view. Right click, go ahead and go to vertex, and we'll continue to try to shape this as best we can to make it resemble a ball shape. So again, I'm just hopping through the views here and shaping this to make it round. Very simple concept. Might have to do some individual vertice moving. So let me look at this in the view here. That's pretty round. Um, I might. Go ahead and adjust these a bit more because you can kind of see if I look at this from an angle, these ones here need to be brought up. So I'm going to select all four of them around it and press W and I'll just go ahead and move these up a little bit and maybe I can scale them in and yeah, maybe up a bit more. Bring it up a bit more. And that's pretty round. Looks pretty good. Same thing with the bottom. We'll go ahead and select these. You can probably spend a bit more time. I'm just showing you that you can always turn a box into anything. I mean, as you've seen already in this video, we turned a box into a sword. You can turn a box into any object you're, you can think up. You just have to just be clever with what you do with it. And try to get a nice round shape on that. Maybe I'll move it down a bit more. And you just want to kind of, something like that along those lines looks pretty good to me. That's that's close enough to a ball. You could again, you could spend more time with your box adjusting the vertices to try to get, you know, maybe a more round appearance. Now that we have our ball shape, let's right click, select object mode. We need to get our sword back into the scene. So in order to do that, we're going to open up our outliner. We're going to go up to window and select our outliner. You're going to get this pop-up window, and this shows every object that's in the scene. The outliner is a very handy tool that we'll discuss probably in more depth whenever we move forward into working with setting up groups and parenting objects. But for now, you can see that we have a polycube and we have our other polycube set here. Now this is the one that we have displayed. You can see that we have our four cameras and then we have this hidden one. See it's grayed out. Our cameras are hidden and this one here is hidden as well. Then of course you have your light sets. But what we want to do is unhide this. So in order to do that, we're going to hold down Shift and press H. And that's going to bring back our sword into the scene. Now we can go ahead and close this out. 
And we're going to move our sword close over to here so we can kind of get it a little bit more lined up. So maybe I'll just go like that. And in fact, I can see, I know that the sword is on the zero axis for the X. So I can come into our translate. And in the X section, I can go ahead and just type in zero and press enter. Oh, I guess it was not that, it was the Z then. So we'll go ahead and press zero on the Z. Now we know we're center, so we can just go ahead and bring this over. And we'll probably bring it up some. So will kind of try to line it up close to where it's on the edge of this sword here. And maybe bring it over just so I got enough of a gap so I can see what I'm doing when I'm working on this polygon here. Because that's what we're going to be joining to this side here. Maybe a bit more over. So I have some room to see both this front face and this face here. Now the first thing we want to do is we can see that this is way too big of a ball. It's going to be way too large. So I'm going to press R and I'm going to go ahead and scale this down universally by selecting the middle one. And get something maybe along those lines. Just kind of... I, that's about as big as I want this ball to be. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to select faces. So we're going to, first we're going to get rid of this face here. So we're going to select that one. And you can just press delete on your keyboard and that'll get rid of that and leave us a hole here. Because when we attach this object to this object, they, we don't want these faces to be inside because that would be pointless. They're not even going to be seen in the scene. So we're going to select our sword, right click, select faces. And go ahead and select the three faces we have on the edge of the, uh, I guess, the handguard. So press delete on those because we won't need those either. Now we want to go ahead and join these two objects together so we can start working with them. So I'm going to go right click, select object mode, select the ball, then select the sword. And come up here to make sure you're in polygons. Select polygons, then go to mesh and select combine. All right. Now these two objects are a single object. You can see that my scale would scale all of them together uniformly because now it's a single object. But we want to go ahead and join these two together so we have a single surface. So now we need to analyze and we can see that we have one, two edges here. And if I look at the box, I can see that the corners of this are going to match up with the corners of the sword that we deleted. But we have one, two lines on the top and two lines on the bottom. And we need to be able to connect these as well to our box ball that we've created here. So we're gonna go ahead and use the Insert Edge Loop Tool. Let's go ahead and select your Insert Edge Loop Tool. And you can see there's two on the top and two on the bottom. So what we could easily do is go up to our tool settings, select multiple edge loops, set our number of edge loops to two, so that'll give us two, and go ahead and just anywhere on the ball where on this top or on the bottom line here, where they need to meet up. Go ahead and select, you can either select this one on the edge or you can select right in here. And you can see that it's given us our two lines. So whenever you're creating a Boolean or using a Boolean operation to connect two objects together, you wanna to make sure that you have the same amount of points. So if I were to right click, select vertex, you can see that on the edge of this, I have one, two, four on top and four on bottom. And then over here, I have four on top on this handle and I also have four on the bottom. So that needs to be matched up. And again, you can just be clever about using the Insert Edge Loop tool to make sure that you're able to add those edges so they both have the same amount of points. Now we don't want to accidentally create more edge loops, so we're gonna press Q on our keyboard or W for the Move tool. And go ahead, and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna use the vertices to move all this over. So what we can do to move just this object by itself, because if right now if we tried to move it, press W, and we were in object mode, we would move the whole thing. But we, we just wanna move this ball over, so we can right click, select vertex, or you could use edges or faces, but for we're, we're gonna use vertices. And we're gonna select all of these, and we're gonna go ahead and drag them really close here. So now we can see that the hole that we've created is a bit larger than this, so we'll just narrow this handle up a bit. So I'm going to select all the verts on the handle, and another way I could have done that was I could have selected one vert and then double clicked and notice that selected all of them around or I could have, if you try to just double click a single vert, it might go down a line that you don't or it might not work. So you can select one vert on the end then hold down shift and double click on an, a vertice that's directly next to it and it'll go all the way around. So let's go ahead and right click. We're going to scale this some more. So I see that I need to scale it inward a bit. That's going to kind of line it up a bit better. Just kind of try to match that up as best you can. 
And now we can go ahead, right click, let's select our vertices on the ball again, and press W, and now we're just gonna drag them a bit closer. Now they're gonna get really close here. So this is a good time when if I get them super close, where we can take advantage of our wireframe mode, or we can also work at it just like it is now. So if I were to press four on my keyboard, now I can see that this is in wireframe. And it's gonna be a lot easier to be able to see through the object and make sure all of these points are matched up. So now we need to merge two vertices together. They're fairly close, but they're not exact. So what we wanna do is, I don't really wanna deform my ball any more than I already have. So I'm going to move the vertices from the handle over to the ball, the vertices on the ball, and just line them up. But I'm not going to move it. I'm going to use a tool to make that happen automatically for me. Come up here and go to Mesh Tools. And we're going to use the Merge Vertex tool. But we don't want to just click on it. We want to set it up. So we're going to come over here to the Settings. And we're going to do Merge to the Target Vertex. All right. So now with this tool activated, I can select the vertice that's on the handle and I'm going to go ahead and press four, five on my keyboard so you can make, see what I'm talking about. This is the one on the handle and I want it to go to the ball. So I select the one on the handle first, then I drag my mouse over and you'll see there's this little line that you're seeing right there. So make sure it's going to the vertice that you want it to go to and then just release. And see how that just snapped to it? I'm going to do that with all the way around. Just going to select the vertice on the handle, drag and click. That's moving it from its location to the target vertex and it's merging those two vertices into one vertice, essentially creating a single object. Now since these vertices are joined, you don't have to worry about merging the edges or the faces or anything of that sort because it is handling that all on its own. By as smart like that, it can do that on its own. And here we have it. Now if we go back to object mode, you can see that we have this ball. But we want that ball and our changes to kind of be on the same thing. So I'm going to press Q on my keyboard so I get that merge vertex tool shut off. I'm going to select the whole object as a whole. And what we want to do is take one side and mirror it to the other side. So how do we do that? Well, that's pretty simple to do. So in the next lesson, what we're going to talk about is using mirror geometry in order to mirror geometry that we've developed on one side of our model over to the opposite side of our model. And we'll go ahead and also do just a little, maybe a little more modification to our handle.